Hello, hello. Today I want to talk about running your healing business slash healing offerings without having a dedicated physical clinic as such. Now some of you may think that you have to rent or buy a premises to run a, a healing business or a healing, um, healing offerings, healing space, you know, for things like massage, kinesiology, uh, psychology, sound healing, tarot card reading, whatever, you know, this list could go on and on and on. Now, I am aware that if you are sitting within a very much sort of mainstream, if that's the term I can use, uh, medical practice, then you will probably have some kind of uh, requirements for things like that. So I will let you do your own research on that. However, if you are offering a, a healing that may be considered alternative or whatever word you want to use for that, then uh, you may find that there's not as many uh, sort of regulations in regards to where you run your business and how you are able to um, meet and and conduct yourself with your clients and of course yes you can buy or rent a premises exactly just for your healing business your healing um, offerings and that's okay you know there's nothing necessarily wrong or bad about doing it however I just wanted to share some options with you if you do not wish to buy or rent a specific premises for such offerings or you're finding that it's not financially viable for you to do so or maybe you you know you're on the road a lot that sort of thing so you know nomadic should I say so one option is obviously to convert um, a space already within your living space um, that could be something like a spare bedroom maybe there's a lounge you might have a really nice backyard maybe you live in a bus and that sort of thing you know you can convert what it is that you have into a space and you know if it's something like your lounge then obviously each time that you're going to have a client come over you will need to probably rearrange things like furniture and and prepare the space whereas if it's like a dedicated room that you only ever use for that then there's not normally a lot of changing around and that's okay each has its own um benefits or not so benefits with those options so yes you can um, use the space in which you already have to run your business doing that another option is public nature spaces yes I am aware that it can be a little bit more um, difficult to contain or control or whatever you know term you want to use the space and the energy in places like that however some of us are aware that when there are uh, slight interruptions with that that's often actually a sign of other things that can help actually instigate further healing or further lessons or whatever you want to call it for you and or your client so you know public nature spaces i'm talking about things like beaches rivers, um, so creek beds, lakes, um, national parks, you know, the list can go on and on and on. And yes, some of those places may have a lot of other humans that like to visit. However, you may find places in which there's very irregular uh, visits by humans to those uh, spaces and places. And especially if you're living, you know, nomadically maybe in a van, then those kind of places may be very good for you. You know, if you're traveling around and uh, you will find beautiful spots out in nature, and especially if you like to get away from uh, where a lot of people like to visit, then you will find some very beautiful um, places to be able to run your business from. And people love usually coming to those places too. So obviously some of these places may not have very good internet connection and if you're having to do video calls or video consultations 
um, or phone calls with your clients, then of course that may not be suitable. However, it's just one option for you to um, expand your, I guess, awareness of that. Now another option is actually sharing a space with other healers. So they could be like, you could be co-renting a space with them or they could rent the space to you. And I do have uh, some friends who have a room in which they all share for running healing um, sessions with their clients. They all have their own healing modalities and they like to pick up a day or two a week in which they go, okay, on Thursdays um, is my day and I will um, have my healing sessions with my clients. They can book in with me at, at the house in that special space and they have their own sort of um, house guidelines, you know, like, oh, I've got a client coming in at 10, like, it's okay if everyone's nice and quiet, all of that sort of thing and that can work really well. Or you may find a, a friend or an acquaintance or someone who, a, a friend of someone else who may actually have a dedicated um, healing space that they have for a lot of their clients but they may wish to rent out that room to another healer it could be a couple of days a week and then you can rent that from them so that's another uh, option as well and one more um, option is providing your services in alternative uh, spaces such as markets and or festivals. Now I am aware that those uh, spaces can sometimes be a little loud, there can sometimes be a lot going on and but if you feel like you're very strong in, in creating a safe space for yourself and your clients then that will not be an issue at all and yes I do have a lot of friends that will offer their healing sessions that you know could be weekly markets and also at um, you know small music lifestyle festivals as well and that's also another great way to uh, get new uh, clients or people that may have not normally you know wouldn't find you necessarily online but they're just out to get their their weekly um, silver beet and apples or you know they're at a music festival um, with their friends it's a yeah another way to uh, yes put yourself out there in a sense, and then the last one I sort of wanted to mention touches on a little bit the about the um, national parks or public, I guess um, nature spaces. Is that I like to sometimes actually visit a local park near me. It sits right next to a river, and there's you know there'll be people around and there's a few um, picnic tables and playgrounds but the space is very large and it has a footpath in which runs through the whole park and you will often get people walking past and I will normally pick a space in there in which I will actually set up my healing um, modalities I will bring down my my massage bed for Reiki and sound journeys and I'll bring all my instruments out and I will um, put up a sign that says you know what I'm offering I'll also chalk it onto the uh, footpath so if anyone you know on a Saturday morning or whatever time I choose um, spontaneously feels like having a session or what I do find is there'll actually be people that will, may not even have any idea the uh, what it is that you're offering so they'll be curious as to what you're offering and they may have never even heard of the healing modalities in which you are also offering. But with that I find it's this kind of special um, moment happens where they, they feel a little bit of a synchronicity, or I do too as well, should I say, of, oh, I never knew what Reiki was. Oh, what does Reiki do? Oh, and they may, you know, speak to you further or they go home and they look into it and whether they book a session with you or not, you've planted a seed of some sorts in which that could grow into all sorts of things that may lead them onto a path of who knows what. And, you know, I have had clients that have come back and they've, you know, really changed even just a matter of a few months. You know, they've 
just started out a particular path or a journey and it's really exciting to be there uh, sort of at the start of that process you know because you really are reaching out and touching more of the public in a sense when you are um, offering your services in a space like that and you know what maybe you don't feel comfortable giving your sessions or maybe you want to give them a I usually give a shorter session so I prefer to work with my clients for an hour or if it's a Reiki and the sound journey combined it might be like an hour and a half so you know 90 minutes but in a place like that I would probably give them more of a 30 minute session and if they wanted to have a more in-depth session or a session in my own healing space my spare room that I have where I live currently then they can book in with me for that too or book another session in the public space again so yeah there's just some ideas um, so that you know if you're feeling a bit overwhelmed with like oh my god I've now got to go out and purchase um, a different property or um, because my house I live in isn't um, hasn't got a you know a, a perfect room or I now need to go purchase a separate um, you know premises somewhere else away from my house or rent either of those things that I just said don't necessarily have to although like I said at the start if your modality sits more within the sort of uh, mainstream medical framework then you'll probably find that there will be certain um, requirements that you may have to follow so yes you may still be able to work with what I've just offered here but you will probably need to just check the guidelines or the requirements for things like that as well so yeah oh, and one thing I wanted to mention you will find that some people prefer being in very contained sort of you know spaces like inside with your healing modalities whereas some people might find that they're actually more comfortable out in nature with a big wider open space and depending on your modality will depend on whether you can work with both of those or you really only need to um, you can really only work in quite a private sort of space because I, I am aware that some of you and I have friends that work in healing modalities such as like yoni massage where you know it's a healing modality in which you cannot have any interruptions sort of whatsoever um, with those sort of things especially if the person's having to um, take maybe clothes or there's particular touch that might be involved with the um, the healing modality and whatnot so, yeah obviously again things that um, that need to be considered depending on your healing modality if you've got any ideas that you want to share or any questions you're welcome to uh, leave those in the comment section down below if you don't feel comfortable sharing those publicly you can reach out to me on my private well you can privately message me obviously through email and there's other uh, social media outlets and they're in the description box down below and I will see you in the next vlog.